This is Sunday School for February the 25th in the year 2024, and it is The Boy is Restored. Do you remember, probably about a month ago, I talked to you about Elijah and how he was living by Cherith Brook, and he didn't have any food. There was not going to be any water for three and a half years, remember? Before he had that big challenge with Ahab out in the mountain. And after the brook dried up, he went and lived with the widow of Zarephath, right? And she was making her last pancake to feed her boy. And then they both were going to die because they were out of food. But God made it so that her flour and her oil never ran out. And she had enough food to feed not only her son, but also Elijah for the rest of the famine. Now, there is another story in 1 Kings 17, which is the same chapter, but I don't think they happened at the same time. So now we're going to tell you that story. It's in 1 Kings 17, if you want to look it up. So um, Elijah had been living with the lady. And he'd been living in an upstairs room. It wasn't a part of their family. It was more like a rented room, okay? And one day, the little boy became sick. And he got sicker and sicker. And he died. It says there was no breath in him. And the widow of Zarephath said, Elijah, man of God, why did you come to me? And let God see my sin and then take my son away from me. Look, he's dead. And Elijah would have built a relationship with this little boy if they lived in the same house. And Elijah's heart must have been broken as well. Then he grabbed the little boy from the mother and he took him to the upstairs room where Elijah was sleeping at that time. And he put him down on his own bed. And then he cried out to God, Oh, Lord, my God, why did you let this little boy die? This widow has been so good to me all this time, and you let him die. And Elijah felt so bad. And then Elijah stretched himself out on the boy's body, stretched himself laying out on top of him. And then he got up and he prayed and he stretched himself out. And then he stretched himself out a third time. And then he prayed one of the most powerful prayers. Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. And God heard his prayer. And the little boy started to breathe again. Elijah had to have been filled with great joy carried that little boy down out of the upstairs room, handed him back to the mom and said, here's your little boy, he's alive. God did this miracle. And she said, now I know that you are a man of God and the word of God comes out of your mouth and it's always true. Now, there are some places in the Bible where dead people come back to life and this is one of them. And one of the other ones is when Jesus brings Lazarus back to life. Remember Lazarus's two sisters and they had buried him. He'd been in a tomb for four days and his body already smelled. And Jesus said to one of the sisters, I am the resurrection. That's our memory verse. Do you want to say it with me? I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Dear Father God, it's such an amazing thing when somebody who's dead comes back to life again. It's so impossible, but you can do the impossible. In the same way, O oh Lord, when my body wears out, when the bodies of these kids that are listening to me wear out, our bodies will be cold and clammy and not worth anything because the physical body will be gone. But we know that if we believe in you and have asked you to be our savior, that the living part of us, our spirit, our soul, 
will go to be with you in heaven and we will live forever. We believe it. In Jesus' name, amen.